So good talking to my next guest, one of my favorites. Johnny Munoz Jr. is going to be back in action, taking on Tony Gravely, UFC Fight Night, next Saturday, right around the corner. Johnny, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. I feel good. You know, body feels good. I'm happy to be here talking to you. Always, always a pleasure, man. Yeah, it's like it's it's mandatory before every fight. We got to do this. Always good uh, catching up. And uh, it looked like you got a lot of notice for this fight. I assume you got a full camp. Yeah, I had a full camp, which is nice. Uh, you know, the last fight was a full camp, too. But, you know, full camps are always cool. You got to pr- prepare mentally, physically. You know, you have a date, you have a guy in mind and all that stuff. So you could really prepare versus, you know, short notice fights where you can't really prepare as much. So I think, you know, the having a fight camp, you know, I think we all enjoy that. At least I do. I know yeah. the fight camp's hard. Uh, I always say, like, the fight camp's the hardest part. That's the real fight. After mm-hmm. that, like, with the actual fight is just, Okay, it's just it's playtime, you know what I mean? It's business, but it's playtime. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, how familiar were you with uh, Tony Gravely when, when you took the fight? I don't know if you're a guy who kind of keeps tabs on the division or not. Yeah, I, we're, I'm familiar with him. We were supposed to actually fight in King of the Cage back when I was. Oh, no way. Cage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fight didn't happen. So, yeah, I was very familiar with him. So, when they offered the fight, I was okay. Yeah, you know, it's a familiar guy. Uh, I knew like already a lot about him since I was. I was prepared to fight him back in the day. So I had a fight camp and everything. So it was okay. And obviously that was like three years ago, I think something like that. And obviously, you know, fighters grow, but uh, to me, it was like, yeah, okay. I know this guy. I know what he's capable of. He's tough. He's a tough opponent. Uh, but I know I'm tough too. Everybody in the UFC is tough. So it just boils down. Who's smarter. Who's more technical. Whose preparation is going to be better. And June 4th, you're going to see that it's going to be me. that's going to walk out of there. The better man. Um, was this the right amount of time off in between fights or do you want to, you know, be a little bit more active? Like what's sort of your, your thoughts on sort of your last fight to this one? Yeah, I wish I would have had a couple more and honestly, but, uh, they were, we were supposed to get a couple like in December, then January, but it didn't go through. Uh, it was nothing officially announced, but that's what there was in the talks, but it didn't go through. So I was shelved up and then, then they offered me this fight in June. So uh, obviously I'm focused on this fight, but afterwards I would like to hopefully get a couple more before the year ends. Cause I want to yeah. stay fighting. You know what I mean? That's what I do. I train hard every day. So I want to be rewarded by fighting more. Yeah, no, for sure. And keep that momentum going, right? You, you've got a lot of good momentum right now. Uh, training camp, anything different, usual cast of characters who, who have you mainly been working with leading into this fight? Yeah. So, you know, I'm always, uh, training at uh, my home gym in Southern California, Norco, California, uh, sequence jujitsu training there. With my, uh, you know, my cousin, Alan, super glue Martinez, uh, Freddie Johnson is a, uh, good str- uh, striker. Me and him always go at it and bang. I'm also training down in uh, Tijuana over at Entram gym. Oh, cool. And, uh, so I'm there like half the week. I'm actually here right now and I'm always getting good rounds and everyone. It's like a war zone down there for the sparring. So there's, so many guys, so many different bodies in there. And down here has been training like with the uh, Juan Pablo, Molo Gonzalez. He's a veteran in the game. Uh, hopefully he'll be in the UFC soon. He's been helping me a lot. And uh, also uh, Christian Kionis, who's also in the UFC. So uh, I've been training real good. But those are like main guys that have been helping me out a lot for this fight. That's awesome. And a lot of variety too, which is good. Uh, you always need those different looks no matter what the situation uh, happens in the fight. I imagine the weight cut's going well. It's next Saturday. Uh, I know your guy always makes weight, but uh, you know, obviously you mentioned the layoff in between the last fight and this one. Yeah. What are you saying? I got fat over, over the layoff? No, I'm just saying it can be tough, man, when you have that much time off to stay on the diet, right? Like I know when you don't have a fight book. So uh, I, like, I know you always make weight, but I always got to ask some fighters, you know, they go a little bit crazy, but you don't strike me as one of those guys, Johnny. No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, the weight's good. I mean, it's never, it's always a challenge. It's not easy, but uh, we're on track where, where I need to be. And of course, I'm going to make weight next Saturday. It's like always going to make weight. I feel like got to be professional, got to make the weight. And even when you're like off camp, like I feel like it's your job to not get too over the weight class. You know what I mean? You got to stay within the limits and just really know your body. So one thing about me, like I know my body and I know how my body like drops weight, like where it needs to be. So I feel like uh, that's the benefit for me. It's not easy, but like I understand my body and what I need to do. Plus you're in Tijuana. I imagine the food there has got to be awesome, right? Like uh, that must be a little bit tough. You can't go and eat, you know, your usual stuff, right? Yeah, there's the tacos, man. There's so much. Oh, man. And it's authentic, even... like good stuff, not not this, you know, uh, chain brand stuff. It's like actually like good. There's some heart and soul in that food, right? Yeah, there's heart and soul. Like 
mom and pop shops like make it exactly all yeah food, you know what i mean so it's it's, it's awesome um your corner i imagine that's the same nothing different there yeah same corner you know my, my dad is my head coach my cousin and then my wrestling coach from san antonio jason kona and so same corner how's this fight playing out you know gravely's a guy too i mean we saw in that fight against nathan manus he's willing to you know th- throw those hands and stuff and, and make it an exciting fight so how are you seeing the, this one playing out yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Uh, you know, he brings it, and but I feel like his downfall, like he's 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 a tough guy, but he's a finishable guy. You know, a lot of his losses, he's he got caught up in the fight and was able to get, you know, he got finished, you know, whether it was by knockout, you know, we saw with Mac Manus, uh, or even, like, submissions. So I feel like a guy like me, like, if, if he's going to bring the fight like that, it's going to play into my favor because I'm, I'm one of those fighters that can capitalize on mistakes. I like to consider myself like a smart technical fighter. So I can see those openings and I feel like that's where I'm going to catch them coming in. Uh, so whether it's like my knockout or my submission, it's, it's where I'm going to take the victory. Most people probably think, oh, the submission, but if we stand up, I'm going to pick this guy apart. And I've been feeling real good about my game all around. And I feel like I'm the better fighter. And I'm going to show that June 4th. So I feel regardless of where this fight goes, it's, it's going to play into my favor. And, uh, but yeah, I feel like honestly, once I started hitting him, I think he's gonna go back to what he knows, which is wrestling. And then we go to the ground that just plays into my favor because wrestlers they always tend to make those ground mistakes of jujitsu guys. You know, they want to give up their back or they leave an arm out, and I'm, I'm gonna capitalize on that. You mentioned it there. You know, keeping active, um, not looking past June fourth. Obviously, got to mention that right off the bat. But is there any card you're kind of looking at where you're like, hey, that would be cool to fight there or anything, or it doesn't matter? It's just like I got to get a couple more fights in this year. Yeah, I mean, I want to J- – July 30th would be cool, but I don't know. That car looked already full. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. early August. i seen a couple, like, cars in August already. I think August, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, was 13th or something like that. Uh, it would be cool to get something in maybe <clears throat> early August. And then that would give me <clears throat> time to, like, come back and maybe get one in before the year end. So that's what I'm thinking. Maybe, like, August probably, realistically, August, and then I can get another one before the year ends. And do you want to do you do you want to do some traveling or do you like fighting uh, close to home? Because I mean, there's pros and cons with both. Obviously, if you get to travel, you get to see different parts of the world. But there's also the travel time to get there too. So, what do you prefer? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. But I, I mean, I like to travel. But I feel like when you travel for fights, I don't know. You don't really get to enjoy it as much. You know, you're cutting weight. Yeah, you're there, but you're. I mean, you're in a hotel, so you're 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 not really focused on getting out there, experiencing the culture. So for me, I mean, f- fighting local is cool. I like fighting in Vegas. I guess that's local, you know, Los Angeles. Uh, you know, fighting, I put my last in the, that kind of stuff, so. Okay. And last question before we get out of here. Uh, obviously, we don't really know what's going on at the top of your division. We've got, you know, Aljamain Sterling uh, is the new champion. He beat Piotr Jan. But, uh, you know, the question is, who's he going to fight? Um, who do you think will be next? Because I know Dillashaw is still injured. Do you think it might be Jose Aldo? Like, there's a lot of fighters that don't, that are in that division that don't have fights booked. So I'm just curious what you think as a fellow bantamweight, uh, what's going to be next for him? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Somebody asked me that question the other day. I, I said Dillashaw, but then they said the same thing, that he's injured. Uh that's who I thought would be next, but I don't know. I can see Jose Aldo take taking the fight next in line. Uh, maybe even Cheeto. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people probably really think he needs one more fight, which I mean that's that's that is a possibility. But I feel like they also might give it him just because he's been around a while already in the sport a while, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's racking up wins so they might want to throw in new blood in there so that might be the case because i feel like a lot of the top guys in there already had title shots like yeah. all they already had a title shot they're not going to obviously give yon a rematch. well i'll throw one more name out you that, that we didn't talk about here maybe Dominic cruz right he's a former champion he just beat pedro munoz so maybe he's someone and i know he also doesn't have a fight book so maybe there's a, a possibility there as a fresh matchup what do you think of that yeah i mean they could throw in Dominic cruz i feel they won't though because I feel like uh, they, they threw him in there with the, the Cejudo fight. You know what I mean? So he kind of had a shot. But, you yeah. know, I like Dominic Cruz, too. You, we're in the same division, but that was a guy I've always liked at 135. So it's going to be interesting. But I feel like if, I, if I, I'm going to put money on it, if you give me another 500 bucks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on uh, Jose Alden that he gets the next shot. 
I don't think I give you that because I think that happens too. But uh, yeah. there you go, uh, Johnny. Thanks for doing this, man. Especially uh, you know while while you're out uh, doing a bit of cross training. Uh, if there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. No, nah, I just want to thank uh, obviously you, James Lynch, for always having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. I want to thank my team, Sequence. Uh, you know my dad, John Munoz, uh, and Trom Jim Raul Arviso out here for allowing me to train, helping me out. My management team, Iridium Sports, uh, Jason House. And uh, yeah, just everybody that supports me. And I appreciate everyone's support. And we're going to come and get this win June 4th. You guys can follow me on social media, at Kid Kavimbo. And uh, you can see how my fight camp and everything's leading up to the fight there.